Have you ever wondered how artists capture the beauty of animals with such stunning realism? Like what if I told you that the secret lies in the groundwork? So in this video, I'll be discussing the powerful techniques of using a grid and the importance of sketching to lay the perfect foundation for your masterpiece. So join me as I showcase how I put in my grid and sketch for this brand new painting project. Oh, and with a little bonus footage at the end. But first, my name is Mimi and I'm a self-taught traditional artist. I'm also a single mom of four kiddos and I started painting as a form of art therapy and well, <laughs> it evolved. I live in beautiful British Columbia, Canada, but I'm originally from the Netherlands. So if you think you might hear some sort of accent, you are completely right. But enough about me. Let's get back to the painting. When starting a new painting, it is so easy to get caught up in the excitement of creating something new. You often dive right in, brush in hand, exciting colors on your palette and a dose of enthusiasm, but we fail to take the time to properly plan out our composition. But this approach of not planning can lead to frustration and poor results. I mean, who hasn't ended up with a wonky perspective or a weirdly proportioned figure? Yeah, it's happened to the best of us, right? So we get so caught up in the creative process that sometimes we forget to take a step back and think things through. And that's when the trouble starts. Now, in the heat of the moment, it's easy to convince yourself that you can just wing it. You can just figure it out as you go. I've done that as well. But the truth is that a little planning and preparation can go a very, very long way. Without a clear plan, your paintings can quickly become a mess. And you might add too much detail or not enough. You might struggle to get the proportions right or the perspective might just be off. And before you know it, your painting is a hot mess. So let's start with the grid method. Now, by dividing your reference image and canvas into equal sections, you can create a roadmap for your painting. And this technique will allow you to focus on one small area at a time. And it can help to get more accuracy and better proportions. I use one inch squares because it's easy to measure and it works for this size canvas. Now, if you have a bigger canvas, I would suggest using some bigger squares. Now, if you want an in-depth breakdown of how I do this, do shoot me a comment. In all essence, I actually don't like doing this step and I tend to have to redo sections or I just am plainly thinking backwards. I'm not really a math whiz and for whatever reason, my brain just hurts doing this part. But. I'm always very happy once the first layer of paint is on to see that I did get my proportions somewhat in a decent place. I didn't even know that the grid method existed when I started my painting journey. I mean, being the noob that I was, uneducated, no art degree, I just dove in and I just learned along the way. But I did start to watch a lot of other artists on YouTube as well as other platforms. And I noticed that some artists had that grid on their canvas and I wondered like, what is that and why? So I looked into it and then I thought I'd try it, especially once I transitioned from landscapes to animals. Now I will give you some examples of paintings that were done with and without the method in just a little bit. You'll be amazed at the difference that has made in my artwork. Now by taking the time to create a grid system, you can somewhat ensure that your painting is well planned and well executed from the very start. It's not foolproof, but it's a very, very great method to have on hand. Now it's like having a roadmap, right? To guide your every step of the way. So by putting a grid on your canvas, it helps just transfer each section of your reference image more accurately and keeping proportions in check. It's actually like having a cheat sheet for your artwork. Now, depending on the size of your painting, focusing on one square at a time can be incredibly liberating instead of feeling overwhelmed by the entire image. You can just concentrate on the details with each small section. It's a bit like solving a puzzle, like piece by piece, and then it all comes together. Now for this size canvas, I won't be doing that, but it definitely is something to keep in mind for future and perhaps bigger canvases. For beginners, the grid method is a fantastic learning tool and it builds foundational skills in drawing and painting, and it can help you to grasp concepts like alignment and spatial relationships. And you can gain confidence as you see your work transform. So just give it a try. Speaking of transforming, I'm going to show you some paintings that were done with and without a grid. 
So let's see if you can spot the difference and which ones we're done with and which one we're done without. Here is a painting that I did uh, quite some time ago. And what do you think, guys? Did I use a grid on this one or did I not use a grid on this one? How are the proportions? Does it look right? If you said no grid, you are correct. I did not use a grid and it's actually obvious. You can see that the eyes are a little bit wonky. The face is not quite right. No grid. The next one here is the Jaguar's eye that I did earlier this year. And I really loved working on this painting, to be honest. It was one of my favorites. But what do you think? Did I use a grid? Yes, I did. I did use a grid on this one. And I think it shows. I think it really gives a very lovely perspective on that eye and the surrounding fur. Next one is Suki, the cat that we used to have and unfortunately passed away. Okay, so did I use a grid on this painting or not? What do you think? Yep, if you said no grid, you're correct. There was no grid. Slightly off. I just winged it with the sketch. I used no grid on this one. You see the difference between the grid and no grid paintings? Another painting. This was a lion that I did as well. Did I uh, use a grid on this one or did I wing it? What do you think? Look at the eyes, look at the nose, the face. If you said no grid, you're correct. There was no grid used on this painting and I think it shows. Even though it's a nice looking painting, something is not right, right? Yeah. All right, next one. This is our Miss Molly who unfortunately passed away this summer. And I made a portrait of her before actually she passed away. But what do you think? Did I use a grid with this one? I actually, yes, I did. Very first painting that I used a grid on is this one. So this was my very first one. And I think it paid off. What do you think? And here's the poison dart frog. And by the way, if you're wondering, hey, can I watch you paint these paintings? Yes, you can. They are all in on my channel. So you can go check that out. But did I use a grid on this one? Yes, I did. I used a grid on this painting. And I think it shows the proportions of the frog. I, in my opinion, they look spot on. So yay for the grid. And here is the final painting. You've probably watched me do this one because I have about six videos covering this painting. And yes, I used a grid on that one. So there you go. What do you think? Huh? Grid or no grid? I think the answer is pretty obvious. I think it is important to use a grid. On the top are the paintings that I did not use a grid on. On the bottom are the ones that I did. And you can compare for yourself and make up your own mind. What do you think that using a grid is useful? Whether it made my artwork better? I'll leave it up to you to decide about that. So whether you're a seasoned artist or you're just starting, the grid method is a very powerful ally in your creative journey. By simplifying the process, it just allows you to focus on what truly matters, expressing your unique vision through your art. Now, I sure am glad I use it in my paintings and I will continue to do so. Now, let's sketch. This step is essential for capturing unique features and the anatomy of the animal or the human, face, body, whatever subject you are painting. Just as a builder lays bricks to form like a solid structure, our sketch serves as a framework for our painting. As you get your sketch going, pay close attention to details. Now for this painting, I'm gonna be looking at the curvature of the beak the position of the eyes, and the different sections in the eye, as well as the direction of the feathers. Because these type of elements really breathe life into your work and are anchored by the careful planning that you've done. The next little section will be on fast forward until I start sketching in the eye. Details like the eyes can capture the soul of the subject. So I try and do my very best to get that part as close to the re reference photo as possible. Now remember, it's a sketch, right? It's not a detailed, perfected piece of art, you guys. You are allowed to make mistakes, okay? Use an eraser, redo a section. This is supposed to be a pressure-free zone. Now, if you don't really do well with a sketch and want to be a bit more modern with your approach, try using a projector. I know, I know. Some people feel like that isn't tr true art if you use a projector or even a reference photo sometimes. And they will gladly tell you that. 
But what I'd like to ask these type of people is, can you show me some of your work? I'd love to see it. And then it usually turns out they are no artists themselves and just are full of their preconceived, ungrounded and ridiculous ideas that don't come even close to the truth. So just laugh at them the day you sell your painting for an amount they can only dream of making in their boring nine to five. Okay, so box moment over. Moving on. Now, with a sketch in place, you can dive into painting with confidence. The groundwork you've laid allows you to just focus on the color, the texture, light, and just to bring your subject to life. Now, as you get ready to paint, let's remember, just like in life, the foundation you build determines the strength of what you create. So each future brushstroke is a step towards your vision made possible by the groundwork you've just established. Hold on, I really like that. Let me just say that again. The foundation you build determines the strength of what you create. Yeah, let that sink in a little. Now here's the little bonus part I mentioned earlier, the background. Now first I'm gonna erase the grid around the ego. I, I don't really need that for the background. I just needed that for my sketch. Now secondly, I'm gonna mist the back of the canvas with water just to help with the paint application and the blending process. Now for this background, I decided to go fairly dark, but not go in with one solid color because that will make it look really, really flat. So even though from a distance, this will look like one color, when you move closer to the canvas, you'll notice the little nuances of color that I put in. The colors I used for the background are Mars Black, Haynes Gray, Phthalo Blue, Deep Violet, and just a tiny bit of Titanium White. Now you can decide to put the background in first and then paint in your subject. Now, if you do that, make sure you overlap the sketch a little, especially with animals, because their fur or feathers tend to stick out a little bit and you wanna allow for that background to shine through. So go over your sketched line just a wee bit. It's a pain to put the background back in after your subject is done, or at least that's my experience. Now on the flip side, feel free to paint your subject first and then create the background afterwards or maybe halfway through. After your first block in, it might be a good time to put the background in as smaller details haven't been put in yet. And you can somewhat cut a straight line around your subject. Now, if your work is more abstract or impressionistic, it might be the better way to go. Now, I wanna experiment with this in the future. I've always put my background in first and I like doing it that way, but why not challenge myself and see if the opposite way is something I'd consider using in the future? Now, if you like a more in-depth video or tutorial about painting a background, what colors to use and how to make it work with your subject, shoot me a line in the comments and I'll add it to my list for future videos. But for now, let's just fast forward a little bit. you kind of understand that when you use a grid and a sketch you're able to break down your composition into some more manageable sections you can now focus on one area at a time rather than feeling overwhelmed by the entire piece and because you've taken the time to plan things out you can potentially avoid costly mistakes and ensure that your proportions are somewhat spot on 
So what's the takeaway? Well, grids and sketches are not just useful tools for just painting. They're also quite a valuable life lesson, actually. I mean, they teach me the importance of planning, preparation, and attention to detail. It shows me that with a little bit of effort and forethought, I can achieve great things. And so can you. So in conclusion, grids and sketches are not just nice to haves. They're like must haves in my humble opinion. But by incorporating them into your painting process, you're probably going to be amazed at the difference that they can make. And you'll potentially enhance your drawing skills and eye for spaces and placement. Remember though, every great work of art begins with a strong foundation. Whether you're painting or pursuing any dreams, take the time to lay the groundwork. Because with patience and perseverance, you can build something truly extraordinary. Now, if you have any experiences with grids and sketches that you'd like to share, please leave them in the comments below. And if you're new here, be sure to check out my other videos on painting and techniques, what to do, what not to do, my lovely adventures on the campus. Now, thanks for watching. Stay happy, keep your peace, and God bless you. Bye-bye.